Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, folks, and welcome to our weekly webinar in which we were discussing about the US non farm payroll data. If you guys can hear me loud and clear, and you can also see my screen, please give me a sound check and screen check. Thank you, Pui, very much, as always. Out of the gate first and giving that confirmation. I'm glad to hear that. So that helps us to begin our webinar pretty much straight away because I just wanted to have that confirmation that you guys can see everything. So this week's webinar is very, very important because we are focusing on the US non farm payroll data, which is going to be coming out on Friday. And the first, um, in, let's say review, uh, review or the first view of that data we are going to get today very shortly at 1315 London time or in other words 115 London time now Let's begin the webinar. A bit about myself. My name is Naeem Aslam. I work as a chief analyst for Evertrade. I come with a wealth of 15 years of trading experience. During this time period, I have worked as a hedge fund trader for Bank of New York Mellon and as an equity trader with Bank of America. Many of you may have seen me as a regular guest on CNBC, Bloomberg, and several other media. In fact, we'll be on CNBC Arabia at 3.15 today talking about commodities. So if you do get a chance, do a tune in to listen to the latest insight. Here are our social media handles. As always, the recording of this particular webinar will be available on our social media channel uh, on YouTube. So do follow us there for more updates uh, and several other um, important information. Now, a bit of a housekeeping. So I wanted to, before we do that, I wanted to just bring this very unique announcement to yourself about the Evertrix unique technology called Everprotect is a revolutionary one-click risk management tool available on the Evertrade Web Trader and Evertrade Go app. I highly encourage you guys to have a look at that. And if you have any further questions, please do get in touch with your own account managers. As always, nothing can be perceived as an advice. This is purely and purely for education purposes. The full risk disclosure and risk warnings are in front of you. If you have any questions, once again, do get in touch with your own account managers. Now, ready? And I hope that you guys have downloaded the platform, the Evertrade Web Trader. You can also download the Evertrade Go app. Uh, so let's start with the agenda for today because I'm moving a little bit more uh, fast today because at 1.15, which is in about 12 minutes time, we are going to get the US ADP number. That number is very, very important. So let's begin from the top. So for those of you who do not know anything about what is US non-farm payroll data, the first question is going to very much help you to understand that question and for those of you who understand what the US non-farm payroll data you're going to give me the answer for this particular question telling me what first of all what does the US non-farm payroll data NFP stands for what does what information it gives us does it gives us the retail information does it gives us the consumer confidence what is the US non-farm payroll data what information which metric uh, it really gives us in terms of the data. So what do you guys think that this particular number gives us the information about? Which particular sector of the US economy it gives us the information about? What do you guys think? Absolutely, Amutha, and good to see you over here. Payroll figures excluding farm workers. So this is this in, in, in very simple English. This is about the US labor market, how good the US labor market is, where is the employment in the US labor market, because the Federal Reserve watches this particular number very, very closely. The data comes out on the first Friday of every month so the first friday of september will be obviously on uh, 
on the 2nd of September. So that's, this is when we're going to get this data and the number will be released at 1.30 p.m. This is uh, UK time and I, again I am putting everything in UK time because I am based in the UK. So whatever time frame, wherever you guys are based on, so you can do that. But I will show you where to find those numbers and everything else very shortly as well. Why is this US non-farm payroll data so important? So the, the upcoming US non-farm payroll data is very, very important for the US economy, for traders and for investors. They are watching this data like hawks. They want to understand that uh, how this data is really going to influence the US economy. Now, why is it so important? The data is so important because the Fed over in the United States, the Fed stands for the central bank. So the central bank over in the United States is called the Fed. So they determine their monetary policy based on the US non-farm payroll data. So if the currently the Federal Reserve has a very hawkish monetary policy, meaning they are increasing interest rate in the United States quite aggressively. Now they believe that they can do so because the US economy, can, the, the economic data is allowing them to do that. And also inflation in the United States is very, very high. So in order to control inflation in the United States, the Federal Reserve believes that increasing interest rate will bring inflation down in the United States. Hence, they are increasing interest rate in the United States. They have been doing it for a while now, since the start of this year, actually since, they, since last year, they started to, do, to talk about that and then putting the plans into an action. Now, uh, it seems like that inflation in the United States could have reached its peak. So the expectations are in the market that if inflation has reached its peak, maybe the Federal Reserve will slow down the pace of the interest rate hike because the last time the Federal Reserve increased the interest rate was by 75 basis point. Now, the traders believe that the Federal Reserve may be increasing the interest rate by 50 basis point going forward. Now, of course, this 50 basis basis point interest rate hike is very much under question because if the US NFP data over here prints a strong reading on Friday, the Federal Reserve can actually increase the interest rate by 75 basis point because then they will have less fear about a recession taking place in the United States. So there are a lot of concerns about recession taking place in the United States and because in order to avoid recession, the, uh, the Federal Reserve is very much paying attention to the US non-farm payroll data very closely. So the strength or the weakness of the data is very much going to determine the Federal Reserve's interest rate decision, which they will be making very, very soon. So far, the Federal Reserve Chairman, the, Jerome Powell, he has made it very clear that the Federal Reserve needs to increase in interest rate because they wanted to bring inflation back to its current uh, to its normal level of two percent. Do you know what is the inflation rate in the United States currently? Does anyone know what is the inflation rate in the United States currently? Can anyone help me with that particular question? What do you think is the inflation rate? Yes, absolutely right. The inflation rate over in the United States is 8.9%. So it has come down a little bit lower than the previous number. Last time it was nine. So now investors are predicting, are saying that, okay, it has reached its peak. So now it is moving to the downside. So one, but it is still very, very far from the normal level of 2%, the usual inflation in the United States. So the Federal Reserve Reserve wants to bring that inflation number down. So in order to do that, they'll have to do that very, very, uh, uh, very aggressively. Now, of course, the next question we have already covered, because that is what is the connection between the Fed and the U.S. non-farm payroll data. Again, the U.S. non-farm payroll data over here very much determines 
the policy, the monetary policy determined by the Federal Reserve Bank over in the United States, right? So the, this data is going to determine that the Federal Reserve's monetary policy stands. Now, as always, I'm going to repeat it once more time. If the data is great, the Federal Reserve is going to be a little bit more hawkish. That means the interest rate hike could be potentially be increased by 75 basis point. If this US non-farm payroll data shows weakness, then it is likely that the Federal Reserve may take a little bit softer approach and then we may see an interest rate hike of 50 basis point. Now, why everything is so important in relation to that? Or well, the next question which really is saying that what instruments can we really trade on the back of this particular data? We can trade Forex, so anything for such as the euro dollar, uh, the, the sterling dollar, the dollar yen, anything against the dollar, we can very much trade that because Forex is going to see enormous amount of volatility on the back of that. We can trade indices, obviously, like the US 500 index, the NASDAQ index, the Dow Jones index. So all of these indices, you can certainly trade on back of that. You can trade commodities like gold because gold is, again, in dollar terms, has a pretty big influence on the back of that. And then, of course, you can trade the general uh, bonds and, of course, equities as well. Now, the good thing about this particular data is that the data is not only limited to the US market only. No, absolutely not. This data actually has influences throughout the world. So we see the European markets very much moving on the back of this particular data. And the reaction of this one falls into the Asian markets the following day as well, which usually is on Sunday. So, uh, so it was usually is on Monday. So my apologies. So, you know, the reaction is really it has a big spillover effect. So the indices of the European stock uh, stock market also moves and the Asian stock markets also move as well. Now, the most important question really or which comes to mind is that what makes this particular number? Like, where do you find this particular data? Where can you go to find that where, the, the, to, to, to find this particular economic data? And what numbers are really making this particular data? So that is a question that many traders and investors always ask us. So this particular number, you can find it from our website, our trade, or you can go to Forex Factory as well. So on the Forex Factory, you can see under the calendar, you will see that. So the first and the most important number in terms of the ingredients of the U.S. non-farm payroll data will be coming out today, which is the ADP non-farm employment change. The expectations are 300 and the previous number was 128. So obviously more people are going to be employed in the private market. So this should be a very positive. And if this should also support the dollar index, so we should see the dollar index moving higher on the back of that. So now it is time for us to really bring out our MT4 platform and then start looking at the price action and in, in live. So we're going to do a live uh, trading really over here and going to find the live opportunities. So get ready for some really good action. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring out the MT4 platform, which is in front of you, and I'm going to look at the euro dollar chart. So on the euro dollar chart, what we really see is on the fifth, on the daily time frame, first of all, is that, that there is a trend which is trading to the downside. So which tells us that the dollar index is very much very uh, positive uh, and the, uh, the euro is negative. And then that is very much pushing the prices uh, lower. Now, because the number is expected to come positive, that means that this number can, uh, the, the euro dollar can move to the downside. So here we are, this is our support zone. This is our resistance zone. These are a 50 day, this is 200, this is 50, and this is 100 a simple moving average. Very, very shortly, we are going to get the number. The number will be announced right over here. 
here in less than few seconds we're going to see that number and we're going to see the reaction at the same time we are also going to see the reaction in the gold prices as well gold prices are trading to the downside the number is out because 1315 is when the number is going to be coming out it seems like that the dollar index is losing its steam so the number may not be that great as many were expecting so let's see what that number has come out so the adp number shows 132 Okay, so the number it has fallen much, much below the expectation. So the actual number is 132. The forecast was 300,000. Uh, 300, that has made the dollar index a little bit weak, and hence we're seeing the movement in terms of the gold prices. Let's look at the euro dollar, what is happening over here. The same action is all really happening over here. The dollar is plunging, the euro is moving higher the euro has crossed its parity level on the back of that let's look at the s p 500 index on the 15 minute time frame again we are seeing a risk on rally because traders believe that now the interest rate hike by the federal reserve which everyone was thinking could be 75 basis point is not going to be 75 basis point anymore the next interest rate hike by the federal reserve is only and only going to be perhaps 50 basis point only so the federal reserve is more likely to increase the interest rate by 50 basis point that is pushing the dollar lower that is increasing confidence among investors and traders who are pushing the prices who are pushing the prices to the upside and then they who are doing that risk on rally very much so so because of that we're seeing the prices moving to the upside we're seeing the s p 500 index moving to the upside now let's have a look once again on the gold prices see what exactly is happening on the gold side as well because we know that the s p 500 index is moving but let's see if we, if anything is really coming into our range so there you go the reaction isn't really that significant because the Federal Reserve is still going to increase the interest rate. So the overall trend continues to remain to the downside, even though the number has printed a very, very uh, uh, disappointing reading, but the overall trend remains to the downside. That means the prices are likely to follow or to fall all the way to 16.93 to somewhere between 16.80 sort of a price level. So that is is your support level that we should all be kind of be looking at for the time being and if the price comes over here there could be a possibility of a double bottom forming double bottom is a reversal pattern which is uh, which can generally means that the prices are usually are supposed to follow to the upside once the market sort of follows to the well, once the market falls into this particular price action so once again to review the dollar index is has lost some momentum but gold prices are still trading to the downside we are waiting for the prices to come into this particular zone and then if they come today we could potentially see a trade to the upside when it comes to the gold prices now let's zoom out and now let's go back to the u.s non-farm payroll data which is the main number that we are all going to be focused on so when that data is going to be coming out that data is going to be again coming out on friday the second so if we click on it over here okay i have certainly okay so let's look at all over here so on the second there we go so we have the u.s non-farm payroll data coming over here now given the fact that the employment market the current private market has printed a very very bad reading so now the expectations are that on friday we're going to miss this number so the bar was already set lower so unemployment changed from 528k it's like 295 right so if the number comes even more smaller or weaker than that which the adp is indicating we are going to see further weakness in the dollar index and then at the same time 
<clears throat> there's also a strong potential that on Friday, this particular unemployment rate, which is currently sitting at 3.5, could actually increase to 3.6. So again, the unemployment rate could go higher. The non-farm employment change could show less people are getting uh, employed into the economy. And the hourly earning, average hourly earning data could even fall further from there onwards, falling to the downside. Uh, and, and, and that is not really a sign. That is not something that we really wanted to see in terms of the US economy. So we could see further weakness coming into the market as we go along. And something else we also wanted to pay attention to on the same day is the factory orders data. Factory order data is a very, very important number, which is going to be coming at 3 p.m. So after all that dust gets settled, so this particular number is going to be very much in focus on Friday. If we see the factory orders actual number showing a little bit of improvement, we could see the dollar index still showing a little bit more positive influence. So even though this all of this particular data could potentially push the prices to the downside, push the dollar index to the downside. But then eventually what we could see is that if factory orders number print a positive reading or a, or a better reading, we could see the factory orders number showing really, really positive reading on this particular site. Now, any questions so far? In the meantime, we're going to bring out the chart and then we're going to do the analysis. We're going to mark the price actions uh, for, 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 for gold prices from a long term perspective. And we're going to see where the prices could potentially be falling on Friday. Now, in terms of setting up the price action, setting up our support and resistance zone ahead of Friday's number, what we really need to do is we need to zoom out of a daily time frame, and we need to see where is the major important support area. Now, one of the area which really comes to our mind, or which really pops out from the chart, is really running from 1673 to 16. 89. This is an area which we are all looking at, right? But then another important area of support, if the dollar gold prices continues to fall, is really going to be between 1564 to 1587. So if prices on Friday, they, uh, if, if in between now and Friday, if the, this particular support zone right over here fails to hold, then the prices are likely to fall further. And then the, this is the area where we see the prices coming in a little bit more into an action. However, before that, we do have this area right over here between 1626 sort of a price level where price could find a little bit of a support and potential 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 reversal can happen but if it doesn't if, if this reversal doesn't happen then the prices are going to likely to fall into this area of 1527 to 1564 so that is the area that we wanted to look at in terms of the price action now if the price action doesn't really have, if the price action begins to move to the upside, what about our resistance level? The resistance that we are all going to be focused on, or we'll be very much be looking at in terms of a gold prices, because gold prices is the one which is going to see quite a lot of movement on Friday, is going to be looking at, at 1790 to 1810. This is the area that I would be very much inclined to look at in terms of the price action. But before that, we do have this 50 day simple moving average trading in around that 1735 area, also, which could serve as a minor resistance level. So keep an eye on this particular price level as well as we go into Friday. Now, any questions in relation to gold prices or in terms of the support zone? If you have any questions, now is your opportunity to ask me that particular question. If not, then it's great. Now, I'm going to move on to the euro dollar and then we're going to look at a few other uh, uh, derivatives as well. Now, with respect to the euro dollar, 
what I'm expecting is I'm expecting the, this particular support zone to be to, to be in focus. So that 0 0.9894 to 0 0.99. 1.7 is our support zone that we are looking at. In terms of our resistance, we are looking at that 1.010 to 1.007 as our resistance zone. And followed by that, it is going to be a 50 day, 100 day and 200 day is really, really quite far, but that is where the next resistance zones are. So I'm just gonna mark the resistance zone on the charts for you. So you guys can go back into the recording and then see them. So that's the next important resistance zone. After that, the resistance zone is gonna be where the 100 day simple moving average will be trading. So in around that, so you have a resistance zone number one, resistance zone number two, resistance zone number three. Now in terms of the support, Support. If the price deteriorates, if the price violates this particular price action, then we'll be focused on 0 0.98 as an important support level and then followed by that 0 0.96. So these are the support levels that I'd be very much looking at. Because these are support levels, I wanted to differentiate them from our resistance lines. So I'm going to change the color for our support lines from red to green. Again, you can go back on our YouTube channel to see these ones once again. Now, what about the BTC? How is BTC doing on the back of this particular data? Because on Friday, we are likely to see momentum coming into this one, volatility coming into this one. So in terms of a support level, I am looking at this particular area of 16,163 16, to 17,700 as a potential support zone. If this doesn't stop the price and the price continues to fall, then the next one is really going to be in around that 13,000 to 12,000 sort of a support level. But let's just hope the price continues to find the support from its current price level, which I doubt very much it is going to be but if it does the support the resistance zone in terms of the price action is very much going to be at 24,252 to 24,980 if price breaks this resistance zone the next resistance zone for the price action which we wanted to see the price moving to is going to be 30,000 to 32,000 approximately now because these are resistance zone let's change the color for these ones so that you guys when you watch the recording you have that clarity in your mind that what is resistance and what is support support is usually defined by green lines and and resistance is usually defined by red lines. So this is our resistance area number one, and followed by that is our resistance area number two. This is support zone area number one. This is support zone area number two. We are marking these particular price level ahead of the Friday's particular payroll number. Now, what about the S&P 500 index? What about it? We are in battle with the 100 decimal moving average. Price is trying to break above the 100 decimal moving average. It has already broken below the 50 decimal moving average, giving us an indication that the prices are struggling to maintain any sort of a momentum. Now, in terms of a resistance, the price is going to be, our first resistance is going to be right over here between 41.90 to 42.16. Now, in terms of the support level, the price is more likely to find support in the long term perspective to somewhere around the 38.20 to 38.40. Once again, we will change the color for our support zone to green to mark, to keep them in the, on the cards. And I will do that right over here. Right, so this is your resistance, this is your support. So that is what we are focused on in terms of the price action we will be really looking at. Right, this pretty much brings us to the end of this particular webinar. I hope this made sense to you guys. Remember to uh, to, uh, to to look at these particular price levels and then we'll be back with more analysis same time next week for our webinar covering a different topic until then stay safe 
and see you guys next time. Thank you.